Hello and welcome to another edition of the Father and Son Pastime Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Kevin. That's my dad. Uh, we are continuing our series of the all-time dream teams for each MLB franchise. Uh, today's focus is the St. Louis Cardinals. Very talented organization. Seem to have a run on championships for the last 20 years. Great players in the organization. Yeah, this uh, I, I found pretty easy to research because of some of the great years they've had. Uh, second most championships uh, ever, uh, next to, of course, the Yankees, and then it's the Cardinals in terms of most World Series yeah. rings ever. Yeah. Started in the 60s, and they've worked right through. So with the Bob Gibson era, and then worked their way up. 64, I think, was their first World Championship, and then they moved on from there. Yeah. But very consistent organization. So if you're just joining us, what we do in these podcasts is talk about the best uh, franchise player uh, at each position, as well as a uh, starting pitcher, uh, like a reliever, closer, and we also have fun with the manager, um, as well as the um, logo. Logo, yeah, absolutely, the logo. Um, so let's just get into it. We start with the catcher. Um, go, Dad, you first. I'm going we'll Yachty. Yeah, same. Um, you're talking about a consistent catcher, gold glover, all-star games, probably like nine to ten all-star games, leader in the clubhouse, uh, well-respected in a whole national league and, uh, you know, throughout the majors. So that was an easy pick. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Yachty is fantastic with the glove, uh, nine gold gloves. Uh, do you think he will be a Hall of Fame catcher? I do. Oh. I do. I think just because he'll be 20 years as a catcher and the titles... Team and captain, right? I think he's the team captain. I think he's been a, the team captain for a Sound while. Off. Um, and I just think being that he's been in so many playoff games and well-respected, at least, what, nine All-Star games? So it, it's been pretty Probably. impressive uh, over the years. So, yes, I think he will. All right. Uh, for first base, again, we were talking about how great they have been. They have really have been great this century. A lot of World Series appearances, only one ring since 2000, I believe, in 2005, I want to say, was their World Series yeah, I think Freeze so. And Eckstein. Yeah, 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 you're right. Uh, but the person who was part of that World Series run was Albert Pujols, who was my first base pick. Um, three MVP seasons, which is just incredible for any player in their entire lifetime to have uh, three MVP seasons, and he had those all with the Cardinals. He'll be a Hall of Famer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. he's the le yeah. current leader in a whole bunch of things, but he also has the all-time record for something. Do you know what the all-time record he holds? Money in the bank. <laughs> Grounded into double plays. Okay. He has the most amount of times that a single player, since obviously that statistic has been tracked, that huh. he's grounded into double play. Not a speedster. No, no pools. I'm sure he's had a few stolen bases when he was like a third baseman way, way, yeah. way back. Yeah. Uh, but for first base, it's pools yeah. for me. Did you and choose Albert as well? I did, and he was like a 23rd round draft choice um, out of high school. Yeah. Was not well scouted, and the Cardinals took a chance on him, and one of those great success stories. Look at Piazza, 62nd uh, round for the yeah. draft, and still a Hall of Famer, but yeah. Pujols is definitely a Hall of Famer. Once and his godfather was a sorta, and he still didn't get drafted higher. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for second base, obviously, we're going to be talking a lot of either future Hall of Famers or current Hall of Famers. Uh, second base, your pick? Rodgers Hornsby. Same. Um, yeah. I, once I did some research, he was very good mm -hmm. and uh, very consistent and everything else. And I think right now he's still in the top six, seven uh, most popular Cardinals of all time. So that says a whole lot about him and played a good while ago. But, yeah, great uh, player in the Hall of Fame and uh, apparently just was consistently great every year. Yeah, he hit 424 one year, uh, which is just absolutely incredible. You don't see that yeah. anymore. Um, really the last player to have that either close to high of an average for me is Tony Gwynn. You could argue for Zay Altuve. Um, but really Hornsby is just a phenomenal second baseman and maybe one of the best second basemen of all time. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, for shortstop, I have... Another gold glover. He has 13 straight gold gloves, but it's Ozzy Smith. And Mr. Backflip. Yeah, of course. It's a simple choice. Yeah. I think really the big argument here is best shortstop of all time. Is it Ozzy or is it Derek Jeter? Feel free to pick a number three. But for me, defensively as well as offensively, I would pick Ozzy or Derek. And obviously you have that NLAL um, split there as well. Yeah, you had and just in the last 15 years, you've had so many great shortstops yeah. to choose from. Yeah. So, yeah, but uh, the image of Ozzy will always be doing the backflip, taking the field during a World Series game. Mm -hmm. So he's, just, and then I'm like, okay, he's ready to play. Yeah. Uh, for third base, um, I think I don't know who's ping ponging right now. I'll just go. Um, not a Hall of Famer, but Ken Boyer yes. is who I chose. Really great numbers. Uh, one of the, even if they could have a weak position here, they don't have a true Hall of Fame name here, but that's, I would say, in the whole lineup, He's the weakest, even though he's a, you know, an all-star and a great yeah. player. But that's the one hole you could argue that isn't a 
is keeping them from a true yeah. perfect team. But during the '60s, he was the star of the yeah. team. I know. I'm just, that's what I'm saying. Like it's yeah. that's I'm not sliding Ken. Right. I'm just saying that's how good this all-time dream team yeah. is. If he is your worst player, yeah, which is incredible to say. Yeah, they didn't have a whole lot of offense, but they had Bob Gibson. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we only need one. Yeah. We're, so, we're going to get to Bob, of course. I mean, I think that's yeah. a simple choice later, but we'll talk about yeah, Bob so shortly. They didn't need to score a lot of runs with the, the pitching staff they had, and um, especially when they had the great starters. The Red Sox and the Cardinals, 64-67, always were in the World Series. Great battles. Jim Longboard during you know Bob Gibson, 2-1 to one every time. Uh, just great pitching and defense. So uh, he was part of that era, and uh, great. I think he was captain of the team as well. That's awesome. Let's move to the outfield. Now, obviously, Stan the Man Usual could going to probably go in one of the corners. What corners did you put him I in? I put him in left field. Great place to put him in. Yeah. Um, I have him in right, and we'll obviously talk about your right fielder, just because he really did a lot of split timing between the corners. Depends what part of his career, but he spent enough time in either corner to be put there. Hard argument to put him in center. He didn't play that many games in the center. But I have Lou Brock uh, in left field um, as my starting left fielder, and I have Stan the Man in right. So who do you have in right? And then we'll get to center. We'll go a little out of order here. So uh, in right field, I have Enos Slaughter. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And then I got Lou Brock in center. Okay. And then Stan in left. Arguably, Stan is probably in the top ten ball players of all time. Oh, easy. Yeah, I'm yeah. in that too. And apparently he hits, and he was like Ted Williams. Mm -hmm. So he was a high average, and he was a great, great player. And uh, always still like the number one of the most popular Cardinals of all time. And just, I think, he was the star during his era. So, yeah, yeah. So the only difference there in terms of outfield is just the shakeup of the, the center fielder. I didn't have Slaughter. I actually went with a more recent name, Jim Edmonds. Uh, I really think Jim Edmonds sort of was an overlook in terms of the Hall of Fame. I don't think he should have been in the Hall of Fame. I'm saying that yeah. um, Hall of very good, but at least give him some more votes. Let him stay on the ballot a couple more years. Uh, he was a six-time Gold Glover. I think he hit 40 home runs one year. Um, never linked to steroids. Uh, you know, shorter guy in stature, but stature, but really. Fantastic, and kind of that second wave of great center fielders, the Carlos Beltrans, the Jim Edmonds, um, after the 90s, Griffies, and Andrew Jones. So yeah. I, he was very impressive to watch. He made going to the fence an art. Yeah, absolutely. So Robbed so many Cubs home runs. <laughs> I can't know I'm serious. He, I don't think there's a record of how many home runs he just stole from the Cubs, but no one yeah. else stole more home runs from yeah. the Cubs than Jim he, Edmonds. He played a, a shallow center and dared get hit over his head. Yeah, and he was the fast, too. great catches he used to make was in the Astrodome, and when he used to run and run up that little hill. Yeah, I remember that. And then he would catch in a diving, and he made some catches over his head diving mm -hmm. that he were incredible. So I it. had him you know, as uh, the number four outfielder. He finished his career with the Cubs, uh, ironically. Um, and he had a couple good years with them as well. Yeah. Moving on to pitching. The Cardinals have been blessed with just fantastic pitching, but no one's better than Bob Gibson. No. So I don't know who, if you're tr trying to argue someone else, feel free in the comments below, but you're not going to win the conversation. Yeah. He had a Cy Young and MVP season in the same season. Yeah. 67, well, I think. I think that's yeah. right. For that same season, he had a 1.12 ERA, but he still managed to lose nine games. Yeah. So I don't know what his, where his offense was that year, but if you give up that little bit of runs and you still lose yeah. nine games, I think that's incredible. Yeah. Um, but absolutely incredible man. I mean, I'm sure you have Bob Gibson stories, yeah. but arguably, I don't know, him or Musial kind of get the best Cardinal ever, depending on where you're coming from there. Yeah. Um, you know, you pitching versus offense, but yeah. Yeah, he, 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 and he pitched nine innings. Yeah. He never came out of the game. No, he didn't want to. He didn't want to be the guy taking him out of the game either. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I think that was do that. Uh, Red Shandies back in the day. Yeah. But the, um, yeah, he just, he did, he loved to compete. Uh, big physical stature, stature of a man, and he threw hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, you didn't take the inside part of the plate. He got that back. No, so, you're not going to fight him either if he hit you. No, he no. wanted you to. But yeah, he was one of the, probably top 10 pitchers of all time. I agree. I yeah. absolutely agree. So not that you probably need a bullpen or a closer, but in the off chance that Bob's only feeling like going seven, maybe it's a double <laughs> got header. The flu. Maybe it's a double header. He's got the flu or something. Who is your setup man and who is your closer for the Cardinals? Uh, setup is Lee Smith. I have that as well. And uh, closer is Bruce Suter. So you went with Suter. I figured you'd go with him just because of your Cubs connection. I went with Jason Isringhausen, but tell me why you went with Suter. Uh, he did most of his great Hall of Fame numbers with the Cardinals. Um, and again, he pitched incredible. I mean, he had 40-some saves consistently for a number of years. And it was always lights out when he came in. He did a great job. Hall of Fame uh, relief pitcher as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, I just, I think, you know, 
he, his numbers speak for themselves. And he, had a, he inter, introduced the knuckle curve. So his big pitch was a new pitch he learned in the Cubs organization. And he had a knuckle curve, and that was his out pitch. And you couldn't hit it. And he, it was great. So a great success for him. Mm -hmm. uh, Isring Housing has the most saves in franchise history, so easy choice there. I thought you would choose Suter. Very not surprising for me, at least. Maybe for fans at home. Um, but uh, Isring Housing had better years than Suter, lower ERA, gave up less runs, less hits, all that stuff. Um, and, I, of course, I don't think – I'm not arguing for Isring Housing to be in the Hall of Fame. I hear I don't think he's quite worthy. Um, but for the Cardinals, he was the person I would give the ball to in the ninth over Suter. Uh, manager, I went Tony Larusa. I went Tony as well, but they had a great string of managers. They really for did. About twenty. Tory Herzog and Red Shaney yeah. was in the sixties and all that stuff. I think there's all Hall of Famers too. Yeah, and I, you went through their, you know, the role, and you're like, they didn't have a bad manager. Yeah. So that was terrific. But yeah, Larusa stood out because of the titles. Yeah. Uh, we also have. Um, we also do. I guess we end it with talking about the logos. I have to get the logos. We're actually going to pause the first time forever for a video. And we're back, as Kramer would say. Um, so we print out the logos for the logo history, despite the very long uh, franchise of the St. Louis Cardinals. Not as many logo changes. I think that's yeah. kind of hard. I mean, St. Louis, you're going to choose red for the Cardinals. So what type of Cardinals do you use? I really just like their current design. They've really had since the 90s. Um, that... I like the twins. I like the two uh, oh, okay. Cardinals on the so bats. So like the 40s and 50s yes. Cardinals, the silver bat, yeah. like a silver slugger, yeah. kind of a, a, a tribute to that was coming down the pike. All right. Well, that's cool. I, but I really do like all the St. Louis uh, logos, even the original ones with like the old kind of Latin lettering, if mm -hmm. you will, uh, or Greek lettering, whatever it might be. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed doing the Cardinals. I thought it was a very easy team. We haven't done the Yankees just yet, uh, but sometimes these franchise teams, I like the known for being you know great in baseball are really easy to do um and it's always fun to debate and see where yeah. we kind of come up we had a lot in common this time yeah the great thing about st louis is the fan base very loyal fan base really supports their team no matter what um definitely one of the stadiums we're going to visit in the near future yeah um, new bush right because i think old bush is gone I, you know what? I, I don't know when that yeah. happened, but I still remember you can. A friend of mine went out there and he said, You'd make sure you do the arch and do the top of the arch and look down. He said, That's a, a pretty cool sight. Oh, I'm scared uh, of heights. So. Yeah, okay. We'll but anyway, I, it's one of the great uh, you know cities, and uh, so can't wait to go out there to see him. That's awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please give us a like, subscribe. Again, anything in the comments below, try to reach out to um, with anyone offering a different opinion. We do appreciate all input. So thank you. Have a great day. Uh, absolutely.